Stefan, I, I notice you are here, uh, but uh, can you turn on? Stefan? Hello. Mm, I will try to because I, I, I saw him uh, on the list of participants. So Stefan is uh, uh, coming from here is he is here, but uh, probably not uh, we don't Oh he's okay. Hello. Hello. We don't hear your sound. At least I am not. Uh, okay, uh, until you, Stefan, find some uh, maybe problems with the microphone. Uh, Piet, once again, thank you very much. I know you are occupied, and but this is this was a really great opportunity to uh, share with your idea, but also your your uh, passion for my machine with the teachers. Uh, currently, is 177 teachers online, uh, and uh, we have a live stream. Uh, we will give some uh, information later. So thank you very much, and uh, there is a lot of thanks on the chat. So if you are here, uh, if you are here uh, still, uh, if you stay here, Piet, you can uh, check uh, chat and maybe answer on chat. Evan, we don't hear you. Can you say something? Uh, I don't hear you. And uh, now? Is it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, and can you see, can you see the presentation? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. floor is yours. Please introduce yourself briefly because I, I didn't uh, have time now to, to introduce you. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for having me. Actually, it's uh, quite by accident uh, that um, I'm here. It's only, I think, last week that I met Alexandra and uh, you all heard a lot actually that I uh, got involved and in, in, in aware of your ex um, efforts. And uh, we just had the idea uh, from the activities I did in elementary school that I would like to share some of the uh, projects we did, some of the experiences we made and also uh, what actually helped me and uh, my collaborators um, actually to develop certain methods or to, to certain attitudes uh, actually to successfully um, yeah, do such projects. And um, so what I would like to make you or, or clear to especially the teachers among you is uh, what it or that there is a difference between just memorizing things and understanding things and uh, so starting from memory uh, it's well understood what happens when you create or when, when memories form actually it's the work of Eric Kandel maybe you've heard of it uh, but when you repeatedly do things and you do them in a certain state of emotion and of um, you know, openness, that actually this uh, leads to creation of new synapses. If you only repeat things without the emotional states behind, uh, then you will just exercise the functions of the synapse or of the um, um, yeah, brain structures that are involved. But if you actually have some emotional um, relation to what you are doing. So if it is important to you, or if it's um, uh, or if it matters to you, or if you're really interested in things, or if you maybe uh, that's the positive emotions, but it also works for the bad emotions. Um, if you are under threat, under, under fear, then you will actually 
respond, your, your brain will respond and um, actually try to memorize that um, situation that led to it or how to avoid it. And uh, this is the underlying mechanisms and in many, many schools I um, made the um, experience that uh, it's just, or the, the systems uh, which were talked about uh, just before, are said such that uh, you tend just to memorize things. You just tend to learn and you are able to repeat them, but uh, what's lacking is mostly uh, putting that into context and putting that into uh, uh, perspective or, or, or using actually the, the things you've learned. And uh, there is actually um, a story from Richard Feynman, also a physicist like I am, um, who was uh, on, on an assignment in um, Brazil, South, South Africa, and there he uh, was asked to talk classes about physics, and he used the physics books he had and uh, taught uh, his science to the students, and he realized that actually they are really well at memorizing the laws, memorizing the formulas, memorizing the uh, things that uh, were actually in the textbooks, but they were not able to apply that memories or that uh, knowledge about the formulas to solve problems. So that led him actually in the, in the final talk uh, before in front of uh, a lot of officials from government and uh, science academy there that um, it's something wrong with the system there as well, that they are only and they are not looking, or they are not teaching them, the kids actually science, they are teaching them uh, yeah, things they could, should memorize and, and they could beat them, but it's not really um, helping them in, in, in um, making their way through their job or later lives. And so the references and the persons I, I showed to you uh, will just be let's uh, more could be used by you as starting points for your own research for your own um, journey into how to teach science how to maybe um, approach children when they are asking questions when they are curious or when they actually have some, some at the first time maybe silly ideas but uh, actually how you could use that uh, situations to make things matter to, to them or even uh, to help them actually to develop skills then to, to become or make their dreams or their um, questions actually be answered and the dreams become reality. And what helps a lot is the STEAM setting which you all I think know about but you often uh, meet people who are not really uh, that fond of uh, integrating science, technology, arts, and, and mathematics, and seeing them as actually tools which, when they work to, together, could uh, bring out really nice um, results and really impressive um, achievements. And in another um, interview uh, actually recorded um, with Richard Feynman, uh, just right at the beginning of this um, uh, documentary, The Pleasure of Finding Things Out, he talks about a friend of his who um, he was an artist and who would always uh, well, tell him, look, uh, if you look at the, at the flower, I as an artist, I can appreciate the beauty of it. But you as a scientist, because science is mainly about understanding things, you take it apart and uh, so there it loses all the beauty and his answer i would actually fully agree with uh, is that yeah first of all scientists would appreciate that as well as uh, the other people do but uh, they may not actually be as good uh, and as trained as the artist would be but at the same time they could actually see another beauty which is hidden at, uh, behind that picture which is uh, the processes that actually make those flowers grow or the uh, arrangement of the leaves in a, in a, in a uh, blooming flower actually which was to, according to certain mathematical rules so there's a lot lot more which science can only add to those things and it doesn't really subtract anything and uh, 
so at some point uh, when my mother was actually um, retired, uh, she was looking for new uh, challenges and, and also to wanted to really pass on her um, passion as, uh, as well. And she was at that time working at a school nearby to, uh, in the field of conflict resolution. And um, a lot of uh, those kids which came to, uh, to her uh, sessions were really had, had problems, maybe in school, maybe among the, the peers that they had some arguments to, so, uh, to, to sort out and things like that. And she realized that there are a lot of techniques. One of them was playing games. One of them was making them interested in some uh, toys or in some scientific uh, phenomena that would open them up actually and then help them to talk about the problem, uh, the underlying problem. And so we started to think together, because I'm from the um, background of physics, uh, how we could maybe utilize that to help this, this process and, and, and making them um, well, kind of uh, helping them to, to make experiences which would help them to realize how important the things they uh, are that they learn in school, that they have an application, and how they could do this themselves. And it started when she was in uh, Canada visiting my brother. And uh, there is a project called Journey North, which is just uh, a bunch of schools uh, buying some tulip uh, onions. And then uh, they plant those onions and then uh, observe actually how they grow. And uh, as, as they observe it and as they register, like certain uh, events, like when, when do they first uh, get out of the ground, when do they grow the first um, yeah, flowers, and, or, um, and when actually do they start blooming. And they enter this online map or an online website, and uh, from that, from the data there, uh, you can produce maps which actually show you that there is a journey of the spring uh, from south to north and that's what actually gave the project or, or its name of the project. So we participated in that and the first time and uh, as we did all the planting and all the uh, measuring and registrations, stations, uh, some students or some, some uh, you know, uh, come by and ask what we are doing and they said look uh, they want to participate in that and this is a very uh, first important thing that we require if we um, actually want someone to um, or if we, if we admit someone to, to participate in the activity uh, the, the important thing that we need to rely on is uh, some kind of interest and either we can or it's there because they are curious themselves or uh, sometimes we also try to invite um, some of the children who are um, who we know may have difficulties, or we, which, which we um, think of could benefit actually from participating. That so um, the first year we just participated, but then the second year, or during in the process of participating, there were a lot of uh, questions popping up, and a lot of things that we actually and the children came with and and said. So how how does um, why is it that way? How how actually do they do these things look like? Or um, how do they grow? How do they uh, the the tube actually um, become? Uh, or can you tell actually how large the tube will grow from uh, the size of the onions or things like that? So we started uh, encouraging them. To and not only ask those questions, but to say, look, uh, if we want to know about them, we would uh, not just plant them somehow into the garden, but we would uh, make a lot of um, observations before that. We would, uh, for instance, for instance, weight the, uh, the the onions and then arrange them according to their mass and count actually how many of those onions are there of a particular mass. Uh, then when you plant them, uh, we would look, uh, we would make a plan and would actually look where they are planted and um, also uh, actually try to uh, locate our 
garden on the on the globe and on the map so that uh, they develop some understanding uh, what this means in terms of uh, Incident of, uh, of sunlight actually during the various seasons, etc. So yeah, there's a lot of things which are not in the uh, typical um, um, schedule of a uh, of an elementary school, but which you need to, or which which you actually come across when you are discussing those things, and uh, which are naturally of importance to answering the questions that pop up. And another thing in the center of the uh, picture, you can see we um, buried a, a thermometer with it, uh, actually to measure how the temperature underground when they are uh, in uh, then winter time. So, uh, but also we were fortunate to get uh, a real microscope, a professional type microscope, which is also one of the concepts that we adhere to. Uh, we try not to um, actually. Yeah, kind of um, try to reduce the complexity or all the, the, the tools we, we use. We, uh, if it's okay to use them in terms of safety, in terms of that they can handle them, then we try to get real uh, equipment that also scientists would, uh, would use. Because um, and, and many times the, the toys are good for doing a particular thing, but as soon as you want to go into some uh, yeah, more uh, impressive regions, then it's difficult actually to to achieve that with the little toys. And they are often also made actually yeah, very cheap so that it um, can be sold to many uh, people. But um, that helps actually to all, not only to get um, a kind of um, or, or better uh, insights, but it also is a different feeling because uh, when you're using the same equipment as the scientist would, then it's also feeling a bit more like a real scientist. And uh, so, in the next year, uh, we worked a lot of uh, a lot outside, and uh, when you come into the school again, and the teachers or, or the parents actually are always reminding you that your shoelaces are open. An important question was why do they? Uh, open up always. What's what's the thing actually that uh, makes them uh, you know, behave the way uh, they do, and and what can you do about it? So we started about or, or we started uh, looking into how shoelaces are made. What's what's the technical process of making shoelaces, and um, then what's um, the uh, difference between different kinds of shoelaces. You have various things, uh, like you have some that have a smooth surface, you have some that uh, are made of, um, or have a very rough surface, You some of them wear over time. You have uh, things that actually would, um, are made of different materials, some are of plastic, some are made of uh, actually cotton, etc. And uh, so this was the first part, then we, ourselves and discuss with the, the children together what's a way actually to, to find uh, the strength of a knot and, and how can you uh, make a knot actually or evaluate if a, if a knot is very strong or if it's not so uh, if it's it's about weak so we came um, uh, with various uh, well, the children came with various ideas and we were discussing with them what would be practical and what would not be uh, a good idea to do one of them was um, actually you could measure the how strong you have to pull them and there's a difficulty associated with that you we had some um, uh, balance which you usually use to uh, do or to, to, to measure weight uh, luggage and uh, as soon as you pull it strong enough to open up the knot, you can't read it because uh, the measurement is gone. So uh, after lo long discussions, we came up with the idea together that uh, you have to build something that's uh, on the left hand side, where you have uh, some wheels which uh, would uh, guide this rope thing actually to the laces and then uh, beneath or below you have uh, some weight attached it's actually some bottles which you fill with water and as soon as they drop down you know you have filled in enough water so they you know how strong the the, uh, the force was or the the weight was actually that uh, pulled it and it also uh, actually works very well uh, that you can actually 
the juice from the um, um, yeah, from, from the amount of water actually to the force that was pulling. So we even did some calibrations right here. Also, we did some practical uh, um, assessments, like uh, they started uh, counting how often their shoelaces actually open. And in the end, it's uh, maybe a spoiler, but if you want to do it yourself, so just close your ears. Um, in the end, it turns out there are two different kinds of knots. It's, it depends on how you actually Built them. Uh, the one is uh, actually loosening when you uh, pull on the on the strings. The other one is uh, tightening, and uh, there's actually the most influence is not just the it's not the material; it's, it's rather the the type of knot you made. So, in the, uh, to overcome this, uh, one of our students actually invented a super knot, which would definitely or didn't not open in, uh, during the experiments. The next year, uh, this is um, what we, we had learned from uh, actually the first um, year that, uh, or the, the first two years that um, it really um, helps to actually have a phase of um, exploration, which is typically after uh, um, March, uh, April, March, we start actually with a new or uh, looking for a new um, topic to, to look into over the next year. And uh, that's because in March we have some kind of uh, competition uh, which we would like to have all the, 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 the groups to participate in. So this is the time when the competition is over and they are kind of relaxed and you can uh, actually introduce new, new uh, topics. And we always look for recent scientific uh, dis developments or discoveries that are made. And in 2016, it was uh, actually the, the time when the ESA uh, Rosetta mission, or European Space Mi um, Agency's mission, reached the astronaut and we were uh, actually, when we meet up once a week, we were taking photographs from the real uh, mission as they, as they came, came in and were available on the website. We took them and showed them and discussed them with the uh, children. And we, you could see actually how this asteroid was growing and you could see more and more details. And it's really impressive, um, uh, yeah photographs that, uh, that are there. And then the question popped up, how do rockets work? How, what is what is it uh, actually that makes them move forward, and how can you understand what's happening? So again, we as a uh, company on um, were uh, coming on to the kids, we're looking into what are experiments to make you, um, experience what's the, the underlying laws of physics of. Uh, and um, what are actually technologies that you use to build rockets and so in the end we uh, used some water bottles which are very well suited to um, uh, be filled with water then you need some kind of valve uh, which stay uh, or makes the, the water and air that you pump into the uh, bottle actually stay and then release the valve and then you can actually have the compressed air which is inside the top of the rocket uh, get out of the uh, or, or, um, uh, push out the water and then it, that propels the rocket and so we were building rockets we were building various kinds of rockets because we wanted to know what would or the children wanted to know and so we actually thought of how can we uh, design experiments that, that answer those questions um, what uh, how, how how do you have to fill them so that they uh, get or that their um, trajectory would be very high so how can you make them uh, reach very large heights and it turns out um, that uh, it depends on what uh, kind of bottle you have and set and and this is the um and, and how actually the the phases of the flight of this rocket is and then actually here we are we're really lucky also to to do those uh, experiments and starting launching these water, uh, rockets in, in the outside um, as we were able to photograph and this is really really lucky uh, there are three different phases. The first one is when the water gets pushed by the rocket. The second one is if there's some air left, which makes this um, 
cloudy-like structure here, and after all of the air and things is, are out of the rocket, then you have a ballistic flight, which just uh, keeps the flight going. And, uh, there again, we always also encourage them to, to look into details and to look into uh, how have th have things changed or how do they um, behave. And what one of the children observed was that when the bottles came down, they had some kind of cloud in there. And uh, so we thought, is it a real cloud or is it something that was just um, for some reason there already? And uh, it turns out it's, it's, it's a real cloudy thing and, and a real effect of uh, the, the um, water actually condensing inside the bottle because the pressure goes out and this actually helped us to or we could show this actually by making some clouds in a bottle. And uh, this is the um, um, picture on almost the right. And uh, on the right uh, hand side, you see one of the pictures we were ta or we had taken when we were filming the starts, also looking at the details uh, of those uh, movements. And you could see that actually the bottle is kind of uh, yeah, got distorted, and this, uh, if you um, think about it, is just uh, not because of the bottle is distorting, but it's because of a so called rolling shutter effect. And if you use um, a scanner and an image or a photograph which is printed out, then and, and you kind of use the, uh, the moment and uh, mimic the kind of scanning the camera does, then you can reproduce actually very similar looking images on a computer and make or you know, make understand uh, to understand that this is not something that happens to the bottle but it's something that happens uh, because of the way the camera work and uh, another thing was actually how high do they fly how can we measure this how, again we were discussing with the children they came up with different solutions one of them was uh, you could build a tower and put someone on there and uh, the person up there actually reports how high it became. Couldn't do that. Uh, another thing was you could attach a thread to it and uh, actually make the rocket pull that thread. And so we had to try out, is it feasible? And uh, is it actually a working technology? Uh, and so we went into the uh, floor of the school and we're throwing things, which is a lot of fun, actually. and. And, and this, or, or quite uh, happily, we uh, by that time already had support from the um, from the, from the principal of the, of the school. That's very important that uh, actually you do have support from the from the people in the school, because um, our experience was that many times um, some of the teacher. Uh, also seemed reluctant to what we were doing. They right? were saying, well, it's uh, not of their age, it's not appropriate for them, but um, actually um, more on that uh, later. The year after, it was about air and vacuum, because uh, from air we actually uh, had um, people in or, or students in uh, our group, already, um, which are Always, or we try always to have um, different ages in, in their groups. Um, we, we start in second grade, uh, admitting people uh, uh, um, uh, students which would like to uh, participate, and they can actually uh, attend and help and uh, get used to the atmosphere that we have, and maybe also kind of rules that uh, inside, uh, if we are discussing questions, there is no stupid ideas or things like that. Uh, you can just, um, whatever you think could be the reason for a certain observation, you should actually put it on the table and discuss it with us. And uh, the next year, the third year, they actually get more involved, or in the third class, they get more involved and um, actually help building, building things and uh, also um, support uh, when we have to hand in um, material for the competitions, etc. So the fourth year, oh, And in fourth year, actually, then they are um, trying, to, or, or the, they are the ones who are admitted to the com uh, competition and who will present the results. And uh, but 
all the time uh, the other members of the crew will be along with. And here we actually think about the question, why do these uh, hooks that you have maybe in bathroom always fall off? And again, uh, discussing with them and um, asking or looking into how those uh, things work, what could be possible reasons, and uh, what are hypotheses actually that, that uh, the strength of the, those things depends on. Uh, we always get to different kinds of uh, technology, or developing different kinds of technologies. In, in this instance, how do you measure the volume be below those things? Uh, and one practical uh, thing to do was that you use some sand, you pull it into uh, the uh, vacuum part of the hook, and then uh, you do this a um, certain amount of times, let's say 10 times, and then you can actually have, or have a sufficiently large um, amount that you can uh, wait and, and also see the, the, the various differences uh, really in front of you, not just uh, by guessing or by making a, a educated guesses. And uh, the reason why they fall off actually uh, this can be very well seen if you use some acrylic plate and look at a certain angle, then you will see actually the mode of failure, which is very uh, interesting to, to look into and to understand why some of them fall off earlier and, and some uh, stick to us. And also, we try to uh, encourage them to, to, to make certain, um, and not only ask questions, but also um, actually to use um, uh, or to, to, to question the re results they have and to try uh, to, to look, uh, are they consistent with your uh, with your expectations? And in 2018, we were looking into solar cells, and there we found something really astonishing. It was an anomaly. We were looking into um, how would water, uh, actually, if you cover a solar cell with water, um, how would uh, this the, the amount of water above the solar cell actually influence the the power you can draw from it? And the reason why the why the children were interested in that was because there was a competition where you had to build some solar um, racing boats, and uh, they wanted to participate in that and wanted to have a boat which was really competitive. And so what we uh, found when the children were with those diagrams and then uh, looking at uh, those uh, actually measurements you can do, that there was a kind of increase where, when you put some water on, uh, above that. And after certain or longest uh, uh, discussions and understandings, we found uh, it's a kind of lens effect because we were using this glass of water and uh, we could reproduce that actually and uh, actually then have or this solution actually made it also into the boat that went to the competition. Uh, and on the left hand side, you see that topics like mathematics, and in this um, uh, particular case, uh, interpolation and um, uh, relations between two quantities come in very naturally. And you really develop not just the, the skills to do it, but also to uh, really uh, find um, or really actually know how to apply it. And to stay in time, I will just quickly go over uh, to what are the lessons that, or the, the things that I found important. The first thing is, um, I think teaching science could draw a lot of um, how um, people developed, or from the methods people developed actually to, to uh, teach music. Why is that? Because in, uh, if you want to have a really good orchestra, then you must not uh, kill creativity in the various artists. You need to have some methods uh, to educate them and to make them aware of what's important using their instruments without uh, actually um, yeah, um, leveling the personality below. And the, the methods where you have um, um, yeah, um, one to one sessions, you have sessions in the group, you have one to many uh, um, sessions uh, where you teach about music theory, and you have the work in the orchestra, all those different components, I think, should also be uh, present when you want to learn or teach mathematics and. Uh, um, 
and uh, science. And the second thing that matters really uh, very well or very much is your own attitude. If you think we have two little, uh, two two less students which uh, are interested in science, we should move them up. Then you act accordingly. But if you think everybody would uh, love this, then you should actually uh, or you approach them differently, and you also uh, avoid actually excluding uh, people just because you think they they might not be uh, skilled enough, etc. And um, one um, is, um, approach to that thing, uh, not only using it for uh, actually teaching the, the music, but also for using it as a tool to solve social problems, is um, the El Sistema. We probably have heard up about it. And I think uh, learning from uh, this effort how to organize a large scale um, employment and STEAM education would be very worthwhile if. As I understood you are trying to establish a system uh, which would actually help in uh, educating the teachers and educating the, the children. And also um, about excluding people for the reason, um, you have to develop a certain uh, um, skill of listening. And this listening is not just uh, listening to what they say. That's the, the first uh, kind of listening when you actually can um, um, judge if it's right or wrong, but also you need to, uh, uh, if it's if it's wrong, uh, then you can actually listen on, a, on a, in a different kind. You can ask yourself under what circumstances it would be true, because then you can understand maybe what's missing uh, in the uh, current yeah picture or image a student has of. Of the, of the science or of the, the issue you want to talk um, about, or want to teach about, and uh, then actually act and, and, and help and, and deliver those missing parts. And uh, one person who has really, um, or one, 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 one scientist who has really interesting insights into how teaching and uh, the relation between people is important to teaching and to living. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Maturana. I really recommend uh, at least his uh, the, the, the chapter in this book, uh, of The Origins of Biology of Cognition, because uh, he put it to uh, 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 concise statement saying that in school you don't learn the, the topic, you don't learn mathematics, but you do learn to live for the teacher as a child. And so this is actually key, the key that the most important important thing is uh, not uh, or not taking the things apart, not taking uh, the teacher as someone who sends information down to the student and the student has to receive, but uh, to consider this as a really complex system. And a complex system in, in physics means you can't take it into parts and still have the same uh, system. You need to uh, consider it as a whole. So uh, what it actually points to is that uh, if you do the right conditions, if you set the right conditions, and if you write uh, or help actually approach it the right way, then you can actually make learning happen. You you do not uh, you, you cannot you do not make it happen. Sorry, you let it happen. And this actually is a much more um, sustainable kind of learning because it matters to you, you do it, and uh, you actually learn, and or in the process of learning, you also apply it. And uh, there's a lot more, uh, which I will maybe just pass on uh, to the um, um, to, to Roberto later on, so that maybe you can get it. But uh, one almost final thing. Uh, was uh, which was also striking to me how I approached actually those two children um, and how uh, to organize things is um, in, coming back to music uh, the conductor of an orchestra he cannot make a sound uh, on his own he depends actually to communicate his visions or to communicate um, his ideas whatever to the other people and to make them powerful and. By that, it's really easy actually to see the questions of the children as the important ones that matter to them, and then uh, 
help them actually to, to develop methods or to develop technology to realize those things that matter to them. And uh, that science matters to some, at least of our students, uh, just one final um, uh, yeah, anecdote. As I told you, when we were working with the tulips, uh, we sorted uh, them according to the mass that they have. And the hypothesis behind that was that one of our students, who was not really uh, the tallest one in her class, um, she had the hypothesis that the smaller the, the onion, the less actually would be there. Or uh, the, the more difficult, or the, the, the smaller would be the, the plant that develops from it. And then she was measuring them and seeing them, and you could see the very thoughtful uh, expression on her first, uh, on her face. She was saying, well, the size of the onions doesn't really matter. They are, all have grown uh, as large as the other ones, and they bloom as beautiful as the other ones. And I think that was really important understanding of uh, what happens in, in nature and also with uh, relevance to her. So I hope we do have some time for questions, even if we are a bit late on schedule. But um, thank you very much for having me. And I hope uh, when you actually look into the references that you can draw something for yourself and for your development and for the activities that you do. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Sam. Um, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, I would like to thank you, first of all, for your presentation. It was uh, really interesting to see this uh, very often uh, 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 reference to the art to the to the music to the paintings uh, nature and uh, this is uh, very important for us because somehow uh, there is still this spoon versus stem and so on so so this is very interesting uh, i would also uh, i don't know if we have a questions but i would like to thank also uh, i think alexander is uh, from buka is here also listening uh, buka is our very great uh, mobility and residency partner from uh, European program, uh, which uh, connect us with uh, many of uh, our lectures. And uh, they are, VUCA is also partner of uh, Makers Week in Zadar, which we planned for uh, April this year, but we have to postpone for April next year. Uh, and we will try to bring all these great people to Zadar uh, to, to give lectures uh, in real, I hope it will happen this year, uh, next year. So, do we have questions? <laughs> and uh, Alex, just, uh, just uh, thanks uh, to us, but uh, thank you, Alex, to connect us with Stephen. So, so um, I hope you all enjoyed there is now 178 people online